Hi, my name's Ian Harper and I'm the author of the uh, Cicerone Guide to Walking the Cape Roth Trail. Welcome to this newish series of videos that I've been making uh, which are hopefully useful to planning an expedition on the Cape Roth Trail. Today's video is about the third section from Glendessery through to Barristale, which is actually one of my absolute favourite sections of the whole trail. I think it gives you a little bit of everything. You know, you've got fantastic sea lochs, you've got great bothies, and you really start to get into some of the rugged remote country that I think for many people marks this trail out as being something just that little bit different. So I hope you enjoy the video. It is with some justification that the area you're entering is known as the rough bounds of Neudart. The terrain was used extensively for commando training in World War II, recognised by the Commando Memorial at Speen Bridge. You'll start to feel the remoteness in earnest as you leave Glendessery in the shadow of a trio of giant Munros, Skernakish, Garbuskioch Moor and Skernankrishian, and descending along the Finiskeg River, the landscape becomes increasingly Tolkien-esque. The walk alongside the River Karnak affords imposing views of Looney Bin to the north in Neudard before you ascend steeply on very rough ground to a good path that takes you over the Bilach and down to Barristale. Barristale itself is a small collection of buildings huddled on the southern shores of Loch Horn, enjoying a wide vista that spreads out towards Skye. Nestled in the heart of the rough bounds, Loch Arcaig is also reputedly the hiding place of a consignment of gold landed by the French at Arisaig for the Jacobites in 1746, but never found. In terms of difficulty, going from Achilbothy to Barrisdale in a single day will stretch even the strongest walkers. The going is sufficiently rough to make a short day and an overnight stop at Sorley's Bothy worth considering. Set at the foot of Loch Nevis, Surleys is wonderfully remote spot and regarded as one of the best located bothies in the country and there's also good camping here. If you do decide to push on to Barrisdale and tire before reaching it, there are good camping options by the River Karnak or further up the Glen near a ruin that's marked on OS maps. The following day could then be a shorter push to Kinloch Horn or further on to Shield Bridge in Morvish. This section provides more scope than most to tailor your days according to your overall schedule. So if time is less of a factor, I'd always suggest erring on the side of shorter days, particularly this early in your walk, as the terrain is rough throughout this section. In terms of the route, from Achilbothy, follow the 4x4 track which continues along the south side of the river to a bridge at NM930934. The main path continues along the north bank of the river up through the forest but can be boggy due to forestry activity. If conditions are looking boggy, a better option may be to head north from the bridge until you clear the woods, joining the track that comes from Upper Glendessery at Alqua Nanuth. OK, 
Okay, I've come a little bit further now, just heading back into the woods. You can see here there's a path junction. So at this point, you've got a bit of a choice about what you uh, do. If you follow that path sort of almost due north, it takes you up to a uh, track on the uh, northern side of Glendessery and that heads up the glen or you can take the low road and this sort of winds up through the forestry and takes you to the same place really so I don't think there's much in it in terms of distance or climb uh, so you sort of take your choice really I'm going to take the low road today and fancy sort of winding up gently through the forestry. From the end of the forestry in Glendessery, the path to Upper Glendessery is initially clear but gets increasingly rough and indistinct as you climb towards Loch An Amain. As you pass the Lochans, the going improves slightly and the path becomes less rough and more distinct, taking you west to cross the Finniskeag River. This can be a tricky crossing when the river is in spade, so do take care, but in most conditions, you should be fine. Okay, so you can see where I've sort of come from, uh, past all the little Lochans. And so this is the uh, point that I'm going to have to uh, cross the Finiskeag River. And this is one of the ones that's marked in the guidebook as uh, 
being potentially difficult. It's been a lot of rain over the last couple of days, but it's been a good 24 hours, I suppose, since the last heavy dump of rain. So this will be, although it may not look it, this will be a lot better than it would have been yesterday, where, where it would have been quite challenging. Um, you know, 24 hours, the water levels do drop down quite a lot. So I'm going to attempt to cross this. Uh, and you can see on the other side, a little cairn, and then the path climbs up just in the distance around that shoulder, and then it drops down to the lock and Sowleys. So I'm going to attempt to cross this just to kind of sh show you. I mean, it's not deep, and you know, it's very rocky. And you can see there's a sort of V that I'm going to try and follow. And there's no way to really keep your feet dry here. I mean, I've got gaiters, you know, good strong boots. And uh, also I've got one pole, which I'm going to hold in my left hand and try and fall. So this could go horribly wrong, but you know, there's no real way to keep your feet dry no more than ankle deep it's getting a bit deeper just here and there's this pivot on these rocks this last bit's a little bit deeper i'm just gonna just throw one foot in the middle there balance myself with the uh, hole and then just swing my foot so i'm not going to be able to make it right across but, oh, there we go so it was just really that last little bit where it gets channeled down there that's a bit more tricky it might have been a better route across there but you know these are quite typical of uh, Scottish rivers you know they look quite wide really they're very seldom more than knee deep and actually if you are going across something that's more than knee deep then you need to think twice about whether it's safe to do so sometimes there's no choice but yeah, I always use knee height as a bit of a guide. If it's more than knee height, then uh, you know, you definitely think twice. But most of the time, it's sort of ankle height or a little bit worse. And uh, you know, the worst thing is you're going to get wet feet. But actually, I feel like I've managed to stay relatively dry because I've crossed it quite quickly. So uh, yeah, onwards. Once the river has been successfully crossed, the path climbs briefly before winding steeply down over rocks that can be slippery in wet or icy conditions. The first sight of Loch Nevis is spectacular. It's one of Scotland's finest sea lochs and runs 20 kilometres inland from the open sea at the Sound of Sleet. If you're lucky and the tide is out, you'll be able to walk around the headland on the beach, which is a bit easier. As you descend, crossing another bridge, the path leads to the shores of the loch, becoming boggy, but taking you directly to Sorley's Bothy. At low tide, it's possible to pass the Bothy and skirt the headland along the edge of Loch Nevis.
At high tide, you'll need to clamber over the promontory behind the Bothy, where there's no real path. Either way, once you've rounded the headland, head north across the marsh flats to the bridge at Carnoch. Around here, the driest land seems to be along the bank of the river, but there are some horribly deep bogs to watch out for. Negotiating the rickety, semi-derelict bridge here used to be a real test of nerve, but the faint of heart will be pleased to see the new, much more solid structure that the estate has recently put in. After Carnoch, the path improves and is reasonably well defined as you head up the glen on the west bank of the river. Before entering a wooded ravine, the path climbs slightly and then descends to the small and easily missed ruin marked on OS maps. There are some decent camping spots around this area if you decide to call it a day early. From the ruin, the path east becomes indistinct. From this point, continue to follow the river, contouring around the bottom of the slope. Don't underestimate the arduousness of this section, it's very rough going. You'll then need to ascend north up a very steep, rough slope to intercept a clearly defined track that then climbs more gently and zigzags northwest to the Bilach at Mam under Lane. Pass through the Bilach and descend on a clearly defined track to the north of the river into Glen Underlane and past the buildings at Ambray into Barristale. At Barrisdale, there is a campsite and a bothy owned by the estate for which there is a small charge. The estate also rents out two larger buildings, one sleeping three to five people, the other eight to 12. I'll leave the links for those in the description. In terms of route alternatives for this section, you could head for Inveree by climbing from Carnoch, although this is a long, steep drag up, and then descending via Glen Madey. However, this is quite a long detour off the main trail when you're only just getting off the beaten track, so it's only really worth it if you're desperate for a pint in Inveree's Old Forge. 
So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'm trying to make these as quickly as I can, but as you can probably appreciate, they do take a bit of time and I want to make them as good as I possibly can. So I'm just going to be chipping away at them as and when I get the opportunity. Um, if you do want to kind of support what I'm doing, there's a few ways you can do that. You can buy me a coffee and there's a, a link to a place you can do that in the uh, uh, description that I'll leave in the video um, below. You can also um, like and subscribe the video, which helps share it with other people who would be interested in it. And also we've got a very small um, little shop at uh, caperothtrailguide.org. And there's things like this sort of mug um, and t-shirts and things like that, which uh, all help maintain the site and support what I do. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you soon.